ladies and gentlemen, and as always, thank you for watching. Today we've been called by a customer that has a uh, railroad vehicle. Uh, it's in a safe parking lot, kind of congested, so it may be difficult to get this big rotator. I'm in unit number 11. Uh, might be difficult to get this and the big railroad truck out of this busy parking lot, uh, but we'll find a way. We always do. All right, no injuries, just a broken down unit, a coolant leak of some sort. They don't want to risk driving it. So anyway, here we go. Okay, so I waited just a little bit, hoping that the uh, morning rush to the restaurants and hotels and everything in this area would be over give us a little bit more room to uh, maneuver. There's what I'm going after right over there. As long as I can make this curve out of here, looks like a pretty good shot out there. Oh, that lady may have to move. Maintenance of way welder's truck looks like. Thankfully, they parked it out there. Where I have easier access to it.
done many, many, many of these before. The only thing I really need to do, swap these for a narrow. and then there's a wider cup width. Let's see if the medium height will work. Yep, I think it will. And they make, Miller makes three heights, a short, medium, and a tall. And both the narrow and the wide. These are the mediums. There's the shorts. Now that's not the new Miller short offsets. That's just a standard axle port short. necessarily like getting the narrow hook point on these but the high rails are completely folded and stowed it does not hurt them uh, I know people tell me otherwise oh you can't hook up to the high rails oh well I've done it for years it works we've never had any issues You can see where somebody has uh, grabbed it with the forks there before. Perfect. It's good and solid. It, everything is up and stowed up against the frame. The high rail system on these is designed to carry the entire weight of the front of the truck the tires when this truck is on the rails does not these tires do not touch the ground they are actually off the ground and those high rail wheels that high rail system supports the entire weight of this truck on the front while it's traveling on the rails so there's no issue on one of these bigger ones in my opinion grabbing a hold of high rails as long as you're careful and you know what to hook to
liner to it to release the brakes. Freight liner, it should be, believe it or not, a standard R134 high side AC port. Clamp it on. And I've got multiple adapters. This one I'll just use that. I should only need uh, two of these. Check to see what the current air pressure is. Zero and zero on both systems. Emergency and service are both out of air. So, this should supply air to the entire truck system, both the service and emergency air when I push in my red trailer air supply valve. Go back and we'll watch the air gauges to make certain. My truck should be supplying air to this truck. With this system completely drained, it may take a few minutes. thought it would have started moving by now. Yeah, it's got to go through that little bitty Schrader valve, so... Yep, okay, it's got air going through it. It's just got to go through that little bitty Schrader valve, so it's going to take a little while to build up. Well, while that's building, I'll go ahead and put some other stuff on, put my light bar on. If it's not built up yet, I'll start getting the drive shaft knocked out. Safety chains. Normally I like to have the air to it so that I can push it forwards and back a little bit to get the uh, drive shaft caps lined up for easier access.
turn that off. A little bit blinding. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, this is one of the new light bars that we've got. It does uh, work light. It does amber and white emergency lights. It also does directional. Point people behind you. Say if this was broken down on the left side of the road, you'd point people over to get off to the right. If you're on the right shoulder in the US, you'd want people pushing them over to the left. So neat feature to have on this bar. I get a lot of people that ask, how is that controlled? This transmitter right here. Plugs into the standard seven way so that if we had a regular trailer cord, we could hook up a, uh, we used to have to run the old long cords all the way to the back of a truck. Now it's all done wirelessly. The bar still has a manual plug so that you can uh, okay there's coming it's just taking a little while still has a manual plug so that if something should happen to the transmitter you can still plug it in with the standard wires all right let's see what kind of drive shaft we got Freightliner, it could be the press in, it could be the. Uh, and I can't tell from here. Oh man. It's the old style full round. Dang it. I mean, it's probably have to get the tool out. Yeah, it should have been a simple tow, but not looking like it's gonna cooperate and I'm gonna turn the camera off while I get some of this stuff taken care of get the drive shaft out of it get the chains hooked up get my service air hooked up and we go from there okay so this thing has been a pain but I finally won. Got my tie downs on it. Got my breakaways on. Got emergency air supplying uh, air to the truck. I've got emergent or ah, service air, the blue line, controlling the brakes so that when I hit my foot pedal, it activates the brakes on this because this is a super heavy truck. Want to be sure we have brakes on it active brakes drive shaft is finally pulled that thing was a nightmare got my light bar on it's already been checked and verified that it works properly doing our final walk around we're about four inches off the ground with the steer which is all we really need we'll lift Fully retracted with just a little bit left out for uh, maximum weight distribution. We should be just about ready to go. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Hook up, tie down, safeties, emergency, service, drive shaft, light bar. I might want to not going long distance but might want to secure the steering wheel so it doesn't turn out into traffic normally you guys know that I would put uh, my straps on here but this is not a rear toe this is just a front toe all we want to do is keep the uh, steering wheel from turning out into traffic and making it wide All right, we're good to go. Hey, turn that off. PT 
PTO off. Release the brakes. Roll backwards just a little bit. Hit the treadle valve. Make sure the brakes work on the truck. They do. Let off the trailer valve. Everything's working. Okay. We're ready to go. As long as we can make it out of here. Got it. For my friends in Australia, no worries, mate. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. My wife gets on to me for saying that. back to the shop and uh, add another one to the list for repairs we are extremely busy in the shop which we're we're blessed to be in that position right now uh, I know some people on the channel have asked uh, why we haven't got the cables changed or why we don't have the uh, uh, free spool on the uh, Peterbilt rollback fixed yet um, simple answer we've had customer work uh, we still keep up with the safety items on our trucks uh, the free spool is a luxury item we can always winch it out uh, the cables on the rotator are still safe we just wanted to change them out uh, we had them there because we thought it was time to change them they are still safe to use. Let's wait and let this traffic get through. Because I'm going to have to take part of that lane coming out of here. truck here I would have loved to have been able to put up on our trailies TE 801 trailer however height wise it would not allow for it also it would have been questionable weight wise so we'll tow it to the uh, old standard way Park, Cape Fire Station number two. Hear that little chirp? That's the uh, when you have a the trailer brakes pressed in. That's a little chirp, allowing air to bleed off inside of here. A little bit of air. Most of it bleeds off in the back.
warmed up quickly. It was in the upper 50s this morning, which for uh, early April is not bad here. It's 77. It's not quite 10 o'clock yet. It's gonna be a warm day. Taking it nice and easy. We got a lot of weight here. The truck I'm driving weighs roughly 73. I would guess, just guess, that the one I'm pulling weighs somewhere in the 50 to 60 range. puts us at heavy for American standards. Yes, this job could have been done with the Western Star. The Western Star was out on another job. The Little Pete would not have handled it. Our 20 ton, this truck is too heavy. It might have been able to lift it, but it wouldn't have had sufficient stopping power, even tapping into the uh, truck's air system. I wouldn't have felt comfortable with it. So, we'll use big iron to move big iron, as they say. Survey crew. Everything's still looking good.
there's where I lifted uh, a leaning trailer that was loaded with scrap tires and wheels. They actually have a uh, yard truck hooked up to that trailer now. Someone questioned whether that was in our yard. No, it wasn't in our yard. Right there. but yes this truck does have an engine brake I'm using it and the foot brakes in combination cuts out at like 25 mile an hour on this thing though so nice controlled slow stop give myself plenty of room Not heard officially, but the rumor is that that new building over there is going to be a camping world facility. safely back at the shop see if we've got a uh, hole to put this thing in or if we need to wait off for a little while see if we got somebody to work on it yet Kenny's back from his tow with the Western Star 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get off of here. We're safely back at the shop. Hope you enjoyed. As always, thank you for watching, and God bless.